Hi there, welcome back to another video. So I'm actually going to be keeping this Gel X set on. So I'm gonna show you guys my natural nail prep. So I haven't been showing this in a while because I have been doing a ton of pop-off sets. And usually my pop-off sets will last like three days and then I will change the design just because I like playing with my nails a lot. But if I'm being honest, y'all, it's getting warmer I live. So I'm gonna be outside. And the thing about the pop-off sets is after about day three, they love to come off sporadically. And the last thing I want is to be out enjoying brunch or just whatever, and my nails are popping off. So we can't have that. So you're gonna see more of me actually applying full length gel -X sets where I'm keeping them on for two to three weeks at a time. I'm gonna be doing a lot more fills and color changes because I want some, you know, flexibility, but I also wanna be able to live my life without wondering are these gonna pop off in the middle of me having a good time? <laughs> So my cuticles are all pushed back now. So I'm gonna grab a paper towel and some alcohol so I can remove all that gunk right off the nail so I can see what's going on before I go in with my cuticle nippers. So you see these areas here where there are still some dead skin. It's white, it's raised, it's right off the nail plate. That's what I'm aiming to get off with my cuticle nippers. When using these, you wanna make sure you're being gentle and very careful so that you don't accidentally cut the skin, cause bruising, bleeding, damage, none of that. So I'm done with my cuticle work and now I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the nails again with some alcohol, but this time I'm using a lint-free wipe. A lint-free wipe or a paper towel is fine because you wanna reduce the amount of lint that's in your area when doing your nails so it doesn't get caught later on. But I am gonna pause my natural nail prep right here so I can begin prepping the inside of the extensions I'll be using. So to get started with this, I am going to turn my drill on about 3000 RPMs and begin etching the inside of the extension. But to determine how far up on the bottom half of the extension I am going to etch, I'm going to measure the length of my natural nail. So what I'm doing is taking the extension, putting it on top of my nail, and then pretty much taking a visual mental picture of how far up my nail is. And then I'm going to drill up into that point. I'm gonna quickly check how the extension is looking. I wanna make sure that I have truly covered the spot where my natural nail stops. If I didn't, then I would drill a little bit more, but since I did, I am gonna move on to the next nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this for each of the nails, making sure to fully etch the bottom half of the extension up until where my natural nails stop. So now I'm gonna pick right back up with my natural nail prep. I'm gonna do the same old same old going in with my dehydrator letting it dry down until my nails look like they are begging for water and then I'm going to go in with some primer and letting it sit so it can dry down nice and sticky so for extensions today I will be using the entire McCart system so this includes their glue and then their medium stiletto extensions and I feel like they're slowly discontinuing these because I went to repurchase them on Amazon, which is where I always buy them. And I notice that the listing keeps going away. I'm secretly hoping that's not the case because these are one of my favorite brands of extensions that you can find on Amazon for those of us who have curved nail beds. They fit really well, they're thin around the cuticle area, but they're sturdy enough so that they do not break. And I really love them, which is why you see me using them interchangeably with the Opre sculpted tips a lot so we'll see what happens i do have a couple more boxes of this because i love them just that much if they are discontinued i'll just hop on amazon and search for another medium stiletto extension set to fall in love with again and it'll just be what it is but anyway when i'm applying these extensions i am making sure to leave a small slight gap between where the extension stops and where my cuticle area begins because I wanna seal my cuticles with my e-file today and I feel like I just get a more seamless blend when I leave a small gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sealing my cuticles but I will be using my e-file today. If you don't have one, you can easily grab some acetone and seal the cuticles that way. 
So you can see the little gap that's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and file the bottom half of the extension until it blends into my natural nail. Because of these extensions are so thin around the cuticle area, this process does not take a long time and it's very easy to do. I'm just taking my drill and moving from left and right very slowly. And as you can see, my drill is only on about 3000 RPM. I just wanna be safe because I am so close to my natural nail and that's a safe speed to prevent any damage in case I accidentally slip my hand or something and hit my natural nail. But don't hit your natural nail, be careful. <laughs> So really quickly, I am gonna do some shaping and filing. I am just going to go around the edges to crispen up the shape a little bit and then remove that little piece that is always sitting on top of extensions. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the nail art now. I'm gonna be using base coat and I'm using this one here from Madame Glam and I'm just applying it on top of the extension. For a base color today, I'm going to be using this one here, and this is a very sheer, peachy, undertoned nude, and it's one of my top five favorites. So while I was filming this video, after I put this nude color down, I was like, uh-uh, I'm about to go to brunch. I will finish the nail art part tomorrow, and that's exactly what I did. But it was my first time wearing this polish completely on its own, because normally, I will wear it with a French tip or something. And here is what it looked like. And I really liked it. I was like, what? Why have I never done this? So yeah, now you guys can see why it's definitely one of my top five favorites. As much as I love this polish, it does need two coats. So I will be applying my second layer. Since I do not have a top coat that is not no wipe, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a base coat at this point because I am gonna be working with gold leaf and I want it to have something to stick to. If I were to apply the top coats that I own, which are all no wipe, it's not going to stick. It's going to slide right on off, causing me a lot of issues that I don't want. I'm gonna be grabbing my gold leaf here. And if you've never worked with gold leaf, they pretty much always come in little containers like this. But once you go ahead and pull out your strip, they're kind of long sometimes, and sometimes you'll get little baby ones. So what I like to do is take some tweezers, grab the piece that I want, and I place it onto a palette. And then I break the gold leaf apart into smaller pieces because it's so much easier to break it apart on the palette before I go ahead and place it onto the nail because sometimes it just gets stuck in one place and it doesn't wanna move. To lay this gold leaf down, I am going to place it in an upside down U shape, pretty much like how you have a smile line on a French tip. And I'm gonna start in the middle, but the end points are going to be where you can see my skin. So here and here on either side of my nail. Since the base coat is there, the gold leaf is going to stick to it and it's not going to move. So you don't have to worry about it falling out of place and you having to redo the process over and over again. So you can just relax, have some fun with this and enjoy the process.
Before moving on, I am going to take this silicone tool here and I'm going to push the gold leaf down into the base coat because I want everything to lay nice and flat. If you skip this step, the gold leaf will just sit raised and when you apply your top coat, you're going to get like these bumpy rough edges and it's not going to look like one even surface. I'll be taking this rhinestone glue here from Melody Susie and this one actually has a little nozzle attachment so it makes it easier to apply some of the rhinestones and pearls and things that I'm gonna be using next. I'm gonna take that rhinestone glue and I'm gonna use it to map out where I think I'm gonna want the rhinestones, pearls, and caviar beads. Next, I'll be taking my rhinestones. I'll be using two different sizes today. These are about an SS4 and an SS6. I'll also be using some white pearls, these two sizes here, and then some golden caviar beads. I will be laying these down randomly on the nail. I don't have a set design in mind. All I'm doing is filling in some of those empty spaces where you can see breaks in the gold leaf. So last but certainly not least, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some top coat and I'm actually going to fully cover the nail. That means going over the rhinestones, the pearls, and the caviar beads. However, in the midst of this, I noticed that as soon as I went over those rhinestones, it completely changed the look of them. These rhinestones were about mm, two-ish dollars, so I really did not have high expectations for them, but they shine really well by themselves as long as nothing is on top of them. After I applied my top coat all over the nail, I took a liner brush and some alcohol and I removed the top coat only from on top of the rhinestones. Doing it this way just prevents me from having to maneuver my brush around the rhinestones and it's a little bit hard to do because they are close to the other elements like the pearls and the caviar beads. So this was just easier to do. It was also quicker to do as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my final 60 second cure. And here are what the nails are looking like all done. These nails were so quick and easy to do. I thought they were gonna take much more time than they actually did, but because laying down the gold leaf was very easy and seamless, applying rhinestones and pearls always kind of go by a little bit quickly if you already have in mind what you wanna do. These came out better than I thought they were. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit I was a little bit scared, but they came out okay. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of this nail design in the comments down below. If you have any questions, leave a comment as well. Thoughts, concerns, leave a comment. But in the meantime, make sure you check out one of these videos here if you're looking for something else to watch.